most schools in the, in the, in 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 the inner the city, they don't have the best sports programs. Yep. Was your school any exception to that rule? Me, meaning your high school at the time? No, we weren't an exception to that rule. Uh, I attended Crim High School. It's an Atlanta public school system. Um, dropout rate was higher than the graduation rate. Wow. And you know the sports, man. You know you got cats that were dealing with real issues. And so, like, I used to fight with some of my teammates. And now that I think about it, because I was passionate and I saw talent and potential in these cats, and I wanted them to try to go to college or, you know, try to get their education paid for, and we would be at the lunch table and cats would be talking about real issues, right? You had some of my teammates, their mom was on crack, you know, selling their stuff. You know, you had cats worrying about, I got to stay at home, I got to take care of my little brothers and sisters. You had some of my classmates, you know, coming to school and their parents then got murdered in the same streets that we walked to school on. Wow. You know, my wife, you know, she lost both of her parents, right? At the young, young age of like seven, you know what I'm saying? So we dealing with all this as kids and at my high school, I was passionate. I wanted to change that because when our high school was mentioned in the city of Atlanta, you would say crim, cats would say, oh, you go to crime high. They didn't even call my school Crim High School. They'd be like, you go to Crime High. And then my mother attended the school before me. And when she attended her generation, they called it Murphy High School. But they called it Murder High in Atlanta. Uh And so it had a reputation that I was passionate about changing. And I was serious about it. You know, it's so, you know, I'm so fascinated by your story because most young people are not thinking this in depth. So your, your level of insight at such a young age is, is so intriguing to me. Now, is this the high school you graduated that you ultimately got your scholarship to go to college or did you switch schools? Yeah, this is the high school that ultimately I graduated and got my scholarship. But uh, my mother and father transferred me in my sophomore year because okay. they felt as if, you know, people weren't going to college from Crim. And They felt they had a kid with some talent and they didn't want him to get caught up in the cycle of just going to a school, playing ball and not getting an opportunity. And so I begged and pleaded for them not to send me to this high school called Tucker, great school. And they sent me to it because my coach, the first guy that signed me up, you know, he took me to Tucker Rec. And so I played with him from the time I was a kid until I was a freshman in high school. And when I got to be a freshman in high school, I played for the high school, but he knew the coaches at the high school. They had a relationship with the University of Georgia. So he was telling my mom like, man, you don't need to have ink there if he's not gonna get an opportunity. We can take him here, he can get out. Everybody's intention was right. But I felt as if I would have went to that school and went to college, my peers, my family members, they probably wouldn't have had that same opportunity. And so when they transferred me, I'm gonna be real, I didn't go to class. Right? I would no. sit in front of the school. No, I didn't go to class when they transferred me. I would sit in front of the school with the police officer, and my man would be like, man, why don't you just go to class? I was like, it's no disrespect, but I don't want to be here. Because you got to think, I'm, I'm in inner city Atlanta, right? Like, I'm down, I'm almost downtown Atlanta. So, so I got to believe you ain't in Buckhead. You not in nah. Alpharetta. You, nah, nah, nah. You somewhere where we see the Atlanta, the Atlanta child murders going on. I'm in Atlanta, Atlanta. Like, <laughs> I'm in Zone 6, Atlanta. That Gucci man future them be rapping about. I'm in that there Atlanta. There you go. <laughs> and so they would have to get me up, man, like 5 in the morning. I would have to get picked up by somebody. I would get dropped off at a restaurant down the street from the school. I would have to sit there until the school opened, walk about three blocks to the school, it was just a lot. And I was like, bro, I think I can make it from my high school. I said, I'm going to do everything in my power to make it. And my mother just got tired of it. And she was like, I'm going to transfer him back. And when she transferred me back my junior year, I played ball. And my senior year, I got a new coach that was a blessing, man. And, and he came in and he was like, what college you want to go to? And he had the same energy I had. And he just so happened to be Jamal Lewis's high school coach that attended Douglas High School across town. And he was like, I got you. And he had the relationship with Tennessee. And he was like, you do what you got to do. And I'm going to fight for you on my end. And I was like, I got you. How was your grades? Yeah. How it was okay. It was okay because I was like any other young cat, man, thinking I'm a jock and I'm going to just play ball and get to college. And I wasn't aware 
of the requirements at the time. Like I had most requirements, but I wasn't aware of the clearinghouse. And when my coach came, he introduced me to all that because cats weren't going to college. Correct. So guidance counselor weren't going to talk to somebody like, hey, man, you got a shot. Here's what you need to do. Here's your court courses. They weren't worried about it. And when my coach came, he was like, this kid got a shot. And when he looked at my transcripts, he was like, you behind. You got to get this in order, this in order. And he put me in the right position, got things in order to get me in position to go to school. That's great, man. It, it seems like God has been putting people in position for you from almost day one. You, you, you know, first you have the gentleman who drove through your neighborhood. He pulls you in and takes you under his wing. Now you have a, a, a coach that transfers in in your senior year, did you say? Yeah, my senior year, right before the summer before wow. my senior year. Yeah. And had he not transferred in, there's a good chance that you wouldn't have been prepared to even be considered for a scholarship. I firmly believe that, man. I firmly believe it. Yeah. That's how I view it, though, Sean. Like, when I look back over my life, of course, when I was going through it, I didn't look at it that way. But uh -huh. when I look back, like, I always share with people, man, it's like at every phase and stage of my life, it was like the creator, like, inserted somebody. And I thank God that I listened, you know, and I think because I listened, it made all the difference in my life. You know, I often speak on this program about trust in the process. You have to trust the process. And, you know, me, like you, I'm, I'm a man of faith. And I really believe God has got this thing so divinely worked out. And Absolutely. I was thinking, like, how do I attach I mean, how do I attack this interview? And the more I thought about it, that's what kept coming back to me, is you are the living embodiment of just trust the process. Because at every point in your life, God has done something to take you to the next level, even when it looked like you were being pushed backwards. So. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.